Hi everyone, a big warm welcome to all of you for our second session of exercises with Lindsay Burroughs. Um, I know there was lots of love for Lindsay last week because uh, she gives really clear instructions and also tells you the muscle groups that you're working uh, when you're doing the specific exercises. So last week was all about upper body strength, this week lower body strength and uh, Lindsay will explain each exercise as we go through how to do them and I will be demonstrating them so that you can see the kind of thing that uh, you're attempting to achieve within the session. So I hope you enjoyed as much as most of you said you did last week and we're going to get going. So hi everybody, hope you're okay today. Uh, first of all, I want to say a big well done to everybody for having a go at those exercises last week. I know it's difficult to um, get started on a programme, but it seems like a lot of you tried it out. So really well done for that. Um, and great as well to see that you enjoyed it. I remember somebody talking to me on the first call and asking me whether I could help you enjoy exercise. So hopefully you um, enjoyed it more than you thought you would last week. Uh, and thanks very much for all the positive comments. So today we're on lower body strength. So a good complement to what we did last week. So Tricia, tell me about any benefits that you can think of from having done lower body strength for quite a while now. I think for me, it's all about being able to lift my own body weight up without having to heave myself with some kind of, um, you know, I don't know, holding on to something or, or whatever. So, for instance, getting in and out of my car, I know I wrote in my blog about uh, having changed my car, but getting out of a low car and actually being able to put my feet on the ground and then lift my whole body by pushing my feet down into the ground. The other thing that uh, I've got quite a low sofa. And uh, I give myself a little task every evening to put to, to hold the tray or whatever I've been uh, using and actually to stand up from that without my, using my hands. So I have to use my, my lower body strength to be able to do that. And uh, it's a little test I give myself every now and again. So it's very helpful to have nice strong legs. And uh, these exercises have obviously worked very well for me over the last few, uh, few years that we've been working on this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what you've really just described is the functional side of it, um, isn't it? Um, there's lots of other benefits as well, which I'm sure that you've experienced too. So um, certainly with regard to protecting your joints, if you can build those muscles up around the hips, around the knees, then that's really going to make a difference to those joints and help prevent injury. Um, lower body strength is also going to help with your endurance. So if you like to go out walking or you like to cycle or, or even run, um, complementing that with lower body strength exercises will help you go on for longer. So it's, re it's really great from that point of view. Um, there's also the aesthetic benefit and a few people have mentioned about flat bottoms and these kind of exercises will make a big difference to helping you with the shape of your bottom and making it a little bit perkier. So lots and lots and lots of benefits from what we're going to be doing today. It will follow the format that we did last week, which was a warm up into the exercises and then cool down. And I will try and talk you through which muscles we're working. Then you've got an understanding of what you're doing. So shall we get started? Yes, let's get going. Excellent. All right. So um, warming up then. Let's start. Stand tall as always. Pop your shoulders back and down. Have your feet so they're hip width apart and just walk through your feet. So you're lifting the heels up and down, rolling through the feet. So we're working through the ankles here, just starting to warm up and mobilize the ankle joint. That's it. So when you're doing these, try and keep the hips nice and stable and just work through the feet. That's it. And you should feel that as you lift your heel off, you feel the calf at the back of the leg starting to warm up a bit. And as you press it down, you should feel a bit of work into your bottom. That's it. Perfect. Then just do a few where you're raising both heels off the floor together. So lift and lower. That's it. Good. Okay, lovely. Good. All right. And then you're going to take your foot to your bottom. So you're going one side and then the other bending through the knee. 
So that's it. So obviously we're working on the knee joint here. So all we're doing is we're preparing these joints for the movements that they're going to be doing later. So similar to last week, this warm up is specific to the areas that we're gonna be working. So I won't be doing any upper body warm up today or very little because it's not really relevant to the exercises that we're going to do. That's it, Tricia. And then if you can lift your knees up to the front for me, that's it. Now, if anybody feel the need to just steady yourself when you're doing these exercises, that's absolutely fine. So you can just put your fingertips on the wall or on a chair or something like that if you don't feel completely stable. Perfect. Okay. So I want you to just swing one leg through now. Keep it nice and gentle. You don't need to make it a massive swing to the front. Just nice and loose. Just working on the hip still. Yeah, hold the wall if you need to. Make sure you stand nice and tall through these though. So it's just the hip joint that's moving. That's it. And then swing that leg across the front of the body. Good. And then let's do the same thing the other side. So front and back to start. Try and keep the actual pelvis quite still. That's it. And then across the front. Good job. Okay. So if you come back to a hit with the part position with your feet, and then just take a gentle sit back, make it small, like you're sitting down in a chair, just nice and gentle. That's it. Try and get the work coming from your lower body though, rather than your upper body. Good. Perfect, two more times. Lovely. And then if you want to just hold on again, because you're going to lift the knee up to the front and then take it out to the side and put it down. That's it. And then put the foot down on the floor and then go again, same thing. So we're keeping the pelvis nice and stable and just moving, if you imagine your hip bone moving around in that ball and socket joint, just trying to mobilize into that joint. One more time. Good job, and then the other side. We've got three more. Perfect, okay, was that three? Yeah. <laughs> Trisha and I have differences when we count, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with a squat. So if you stand away from the chair, Tricia, just a little bit away from the chair, there you go, because we're going to use that chair as a guide, all right? Have your feet hit width apart and um, parallel, so make sure your feet are parallel, and you want to be standing tall. Let's do a couple of demonstrations. So the key thing with your squat is that you lead with the bottom. So you aim the bottom towards the chair. There you go, that's perfect. And then push through your heels to come back up to the top. That's brilliant. So that is very different from leading with your knees. So Tricia, if you just um, send your knees first and send them over your toes. So there you go, yeah. So can you see how that's different and it loads through the knee? So you really want to think about exactly like that, that idea of the bottom leading and you've got the chair there just in case. I know it sometimes feels a bit strange when you're doing this movement for the first time. It feels like you're going to topple over. So let's start our repetitions, Tricia. We're going for 12. So lead with the bottom. Now, we're not going to rush through. And what we're going to think about is when you get to the bottom, push through your heels. So push your heels into the floor and really squeeze your bottom on the way up. Now, if you find this uncomfortable on your back, then you want to make sure that you're not hollowing into the lower back. 
that you keep the back nice and long in that lower part. That's it. And if it still hurts, then don't go down so low. So stop when you've done your 12, Trisha. Nine. Nine, okay, three more then. So this exercise is a brilliant exercise. It's really functional. It's similar to how you would be um, working if you were to get up and down from a chair. Um, and it works all the main muscles. So the muscle at the front of your thigh is the quadricep. If you can point to that, Tricia, your quads, yeah, down there. Your hamstring at the back of the leg, point to that one, yeah. So it goes from your knee to your bottom. It's going to work your actual bottom muscles as well, especially if you push your heels into the floor on the way back up. So it's a really good all round lower body exercise. Good. Is that okay, Trisha? Yeah, great. Brilliant. Now, if you can face us just for a minute, Trisha, because I just want to give people a couple of things to watch out for. So can you just face us rather than being side on? That's it. Now, um, have the feet hit width apart. Now, what I often see as people are squatting is that their knees collapse into the center. So can you just do one and show the knees collapsing towards each other as you, there you go. So that's quite exaggerated, but um, they do collapse into the middle so, and then come back up, Trisha. Um, similarly, I see them going apart rather than staying parallel. So the knees go slightly out. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So you want to make sure as you're squatting that the knees and the ankles stay the same distance, if you can, as you make the movement happen. Sometimes I've used things like a, a football or something like that with people to hold for people to hold between their knees. And it just helps keep that alignment through the knee area because you don't want to twist and injure your knee. Do you know what helps me, Lindsay, when I'm doing them, that I'm doing them properly, is that I can see my foot, my whole foot as I go back down. So as I go back down, I know that I'm in the right position, that this is straight because I can see my whole foot. So that's a squat, proper squat. And if I go down and I've got my knees pushing forward so that I now can't see my feet, then I know that I'm in the wrong position. Yeah, that is a, a brilliant point, actually. So when you, we'll do our second set in a second, but when you are lowering your bottom in the direction of the chair, you want to make sure that you can see your toes. And that means that your knees have stayed back from the toes and you're in the right position. That's a really, really good point. The other thing to watch out for is upper body coming forward. So can you just do one where you don't maybe side on Trisha to the chair where you um, don't use your lower body so much? Yes, exactly. So can you see that there's not a lot of action going on in the legs there? It's all coming from the upper body flexing forward. So just make sure there you go and, and then you can stand up. Just make sure when you're doing them that you're not just using your upper body to compensate for the lower body not being strong enough. Good. So we're going to do a second set. And just like last week, we will make the second set harder than the first. So that gives you guys an option to choose from. So you either choose option number one as per the first set, or you choose option number two as per the second set. And you do two sets of each if you can. I said this a lot last week, but please make sure that you just do what you can. And if you can't get the 12 repetitions, that's OK. Keep a note of what you can do and build it up gradually. So on this second set, I want to keep that beautiful technique that we've talked about. And I want you to slow it down, Tricia. So I want you to go down to the count of two. When you get to the bottom, hold it for a fraction of a second, push through your heels and come up for the count of two. Good job. Yeah, so keep going with those. So you've done one, you've got 11 to go. Beautiful. Lovely. That's it. So you can see that Trisha's knees are back from her toes as she's doing this. So you can see that she's leading with her bottom. So nice and slow. That's it. So even slower on the way up, slow, slow, slow. So you've really got to control it, beautiful. It's often harder with the strength exercises when you do go slower. If you rush through, then you'll find it easier, but you won't get as much benefit. Good job.
Lovely. How many have you done? Honestly? I think, about, I think that's nine. I think okay. Roughly. <laughs> Lovely. Good. Try not to support your upper body weight on your thighs. Mm -hmm. There you go. Perfect. Well done. Excellent. So I would imagine that with that, you've started to feel the muscles of the lower body working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good job. All right, so let's go on to our second lower body exercise. This is also going to work uh, similar muscles, but in a different way to the ones that we've just talked about with our squats. It's probably a slightly more challenging exercise, but let's see how we get on. So you're going to Keep your feet hip width apart, and that's important. I see a lot of people with a lunge trying to get one foot in front of the other. So if you keep your feet hip width apart, even when we go into the step out, then it will keep your hips nicely aligned. Okay, so I just want you to take your split your feet out now, front and back. That's it. And keep them hip width apart. There you go. Okay. Now the back heel is going to be off the floor, so you'd be resting on the ball of your foot. Perfect. Now you can see that Trish has got quite a big gap between her feet and we want that gap because we want to drop right down in the middle. So what I also often see, there you go, perfect. That's lovely. So what I'll often see with a lunge and then come back up is people coming forward and back rather than dropping down into the middle. There you go. So you, again, the knee will come over the toe if you do that and it will load your knee and potentially could cause injury. So you want to get an up and down rather than a front and back movement. All right, are you ready to go then, Tricia? We're gonna do 12 of these if you can. So back heel is gonna stay off and you're gonna drop down into that gap in the middle, keeping an eye on your knees and your toes, just like you did last time should be able to see your toes throughout. Now, Trisha's just stabilizing herself on the chair there. If you don't need to do that, then by all means, don't use a chair. It's not essential, but sometimes it just adds a bit of a comfort factor if you've got it there with you. Looking good. Now, let's think about getting the bottom as activated as we can. So exactly the same as with your squat, push through that front heel on your way back up and feel the bottom. That's 12. Is that 12, perfect, good. How did that feel? Yeah, it's quite hard work. I think you, uh, you have to accept that, that, especially if you get low enough, that you do have to work quite hard, but it, you can feel it really, really working. It is a harder exercise. Uh, what I would say is if your knees are bad or if your legs are not that strong at the moment, then don't go down as low. Um, what you're aiming towards is to get both knees at a 90 degree angle. But if you can't do that, then um, just go as low as is comfortable for you and build it up gradually. OK, so a um, couple of things to watch out for. I've already mentioned uh, the front and back movement rather than the up and down movement. So that is an important one so that your knees stay safe. The other one is, and I didn't see it too much when you were, when you were going through that set, Tricia, but people's feet uh, tend to kick in. So can you just do one for me where your heel is um, kicking into the, to the center line of your body? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So if you do a lunge in that position, can you see how Trisha's knee twists at the back? So clearly that's not going to be great for your knee. So you want to make sure that both feet exactly are facing forward all the way through the movement. Perfect. Let's do the other side then. And to make this one a bit more difficult, we're going to slow it down like we did last time. So if you swap your legs over. I have done that. Okay. Um, and then you can start off and just slow it down. So you're going down for the count of two and then push through the heel and up for the count of two. Keep going, so you've got 12 of them. Slow, 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 lovely, push through the heel. Now you want to make sure that in that attempt to push through the heel and activate the bottom, that you're not snapping the knee joint. 
when you get to the top of the movement. So try not to snap back in. It should always be slightly soft, even at the top. These look good. What you can see that Trisha's doing nicely as well is keeping her hips nice and square. So it's quite tempting sometimes as you're dropping for one hip, particularly it's normally on the side of your back leg. So in this case, it'd be Trisha's right hip that would drop down to the side, but she's managing to hold that nice and square. So that's what you want to aim to achieve. Nice. Say that again. It's my last one. That's your last one. Brilliant. Good. So as I said, it is a harder exercise, but very, very effective working all those muscles of the leg. Okay, so slightly easier, next one. Uh, we're gonna work on the calves, so the lower part of the leg at the back. If you want to just hold on to the chair just to steady yourself, by all means do. Um, if you don't hold on, then you're going to work your balance a little bit more at the same time. But all we're doing is similar to the movement that we did in the warm up is lifting up onto the balls of your feet. So lifting up into a calf raise and down. That's it. Okay, so it's just a lift and a lower. As you lift, you want to think about the head going up to the ceiling rather than rocking forwards and back. That's it. And then you come as high as you can onto the ball of the feet. So let's go then, Tricia. We're gonna try 10 repetitions of this because calves are often not worked. So go for 10 if you can. You want to make sure that you're coming right up onto the ball of the feet. That's it. So this is a really good one. You know how sometimes when you walk, you get into the habit of shuffling a little bit. So strengthening your calf muscle will really help to avoid that. But also it will help to propel you as you walk. So it's an important muscle to strengthen and one that doesn't get work very often. Done your 10? Yeah. Good, lovely. Okay, so for our second set, uh, we are going to slow it down. So you are going to come up for the count of three and down for the count of three. And it's going to be the downward phase probably that will be the hardest because you'll want to just drop, drop down. Just slow it down, lovely. So just one thing to watch out for here is the position of your feet. So Trisha's are quite nicely aligned. Um, as it stands currently. But again, try not to let your heels kick into the center. Try and keep them nice, the feet nice and straight. And you're just going straight up onto the ball of the feet. That's it. So really, really slow up for the count of three and down for the count of three, 10 repetitions. That's it. That's 10. Brilliant. Okay, so I would hope that you would have felt that at the back of your leg. Yeah, definitely. At the bottom. Yeah, perfect. Um, and for reference, if anybody has done quite a lot of those in, in the past, then you can do exactly what we've just done, but on a single leg, but it's much, much harder. Good. Okay. So I like to focus on the bottom next, not least because um, it's an important muscle from a visual point of view, an aesthetic point of view, but also because it's really, really important from um, a stability of the hip point of view. So take one leg out to the back and tap the toe on the floor. Um, I like to hinge forward slightly with my body for this one because I feel like it gives you more mobility and gets into the bottom a little bit more. So you can see Trisha's still got a nice straight line from her shoulders through her hips and her toes. So this exercise is going to work the gluteus maximus, which is that big muscle. In fact, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest muscle in the body. But again, it, it doesn't get worked that often. So it tends to, it tends to obviously weaken and it can be the cause of lower back pain, um, Knees can be um, implicated if your glutes are not strong. So it's, it's a really important one to have a go at. So what we're gonna do is from that position, you're going to squeeze your bottom, Trisha, and lift that leg off the floor. That's it. 
and then bring it back down. Now, let's do another couple. What you want to be careful of is that as you're doing this, you're not lifting the leg so high that your lower back starts to get involved. Okay, so it's a straight leg lift, but you're imagining that you have to squeeze your bottom to make that lift happen. So let's go with our set, Trisha. You've probably done about three already. So let's have another nine. And I want you to imagine that your leg is a dead weight and it's your the squeezing of your bottom that is making the lift of the leg happen. Keep it nice and long. And you should feel this quite quickly. It should feel, you know, reasonably intense into that muscle. What do you think, Trisha? Yeah, it's intense enough for me. <laughs> Good. Okay. You didn't feel that in your lower back? No. If people do feel it in the lower back, you need to make sure you're lightly drawing in your tummy as you work. And you also need to make sure that you're not moving through the lower back. So only lift the leg to the point at which you can, such that the bottom muscle is working and not the back. It's really important. Good. Okay, so let's go with the other leg. And we're gonna slow it down again. So you're going to lift and squeeze and hold at the top. There you go. So hold it for three seconds and then release. So another 12, hold at the top, squeeze, 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 and then release. So that holding at the top is gonna to give you that extra, extra work in the muscle. That's it. So you can see that Trisha's not moving around through the lower back. So really keep your tummy lightly drawn in, Trisha, and make sure it's just the bottom and not the lower back. Also, use the position of the wall to keep your hips square. So as you lift your leg, make sure you're not twisting the whole of the upper body. The hips stay square and it's just the leg that's moving. Good. That's my 12. Good. And then rest. Lovely. So we've done, we did one on each side for you, but for everybody else, um, you can do two sets, choose the option that's right, and then do two sets on, on both sides with a break in between. Good. Okay. So final exercise, we are sticking with the pelvis area and the bottom muscles but this time it's the muscle that is on the side of the hip and it's the muscle that's responsible for lifting the body away sorry the leg away from the center line of the body so if you stand side onto the wall you can um, hold on as you did before that's it so you're going to stand nice and tall um, You've got your hand in a good position because I want you to make sure that when we do this movement, it's the side of the hip that does the work and not the waist, okay? So keep your waist nice and long. And as I said, by having your hand there, you can actually feel what's going on. I want you to lift your leg out to the side, so your left leg out to the side, keeping the foot flexed. And can you see how Trisha's just, um, pointed her toe out to the side. So what I'd like you to do, Tricia, is keep the toe towards us, so towards the front. So keep the, yeah, keep the foot flexed, that's it, and come back down, and then go again. So rather than leading with the toe to the side, keep your toe tucked to the front. So go when you're ready, 12 repetitions, keeping the toe tucked towards us, squeezing into the outer thigh, Imagine you're pushing away against something that's quite hard. So you've got a bit of resistance in that outer thigh. And that's really important because if you just kind of swing your legs a bit like we did in the warm up, then we're not going to be getting that muscle to work. So really squeeze into the outer thigh to get the lift. Can you feel that? Yeah. It's not unusual to feel it on the other side as well. 
because that leg is clearly taking your body weight. So don't, don't be worried if you feel it in that supporting leg, that's completely fine. So the main thing to watch out for on this one, as I said, is using the waist to hitch up. Just as a um, couple of teaching points on this then. So if you use your waist, then obviously you're not going to get the benefit in your hip. So I can squeeze into here and I can hitch my leg up. So it looks like my leg is going out to the side, but what I'm actually doing is I'm contracting into my waist here. So I want you to use your hand to keep the waist long and then resist as you push the leg out to the side, squeeze into the outer thigh here and back in, resist against something and keep the toe pointing to the front. Perfect, let's do the other side then, Trisha. So we, yeah, um, it's a bit more difficult because if you turn around, then we'll get your back, which we don't want. But if for the people working at home, I would turn around and face the other way so that you can hold on with your other arm. So again, keep your toe towards us, Tricia, and squeeze, that's it. Stand nice and tall and squeeze. And you only go as high as you can without other parts of the body starting to move. So really try and isolate that muscle on the outer thigh. Is that 12? Yeah. Good, perfect. Did you feel that in the outer thigh? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, good, brilliant. So there you are. You've got five lower body exercises. Which did you find the most difficult? I, I do genuinely find the, um, is it the lunge where, is it when you get, you know, you're going up and down in the middle, you've got your legs your legs Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're trying to drop down. I find that really, really quite tough. I suppose it's because, um, you do need quite a lot of strength in your in your thighs uh, to be able to do that, and uh, yeah, it's, it's testing. But obviously, you can feel the benefit of it as you do it. Mm -hmm. It is. It's one of the more difficult ones that we've done, but I wanted to put it in because it's such a good one to work um, all those different areas that we've talked about, and also. Um, squats and lunges are kind of like the basis of any lower body strength program so there's lots of things that you can then develop off those movements so it's quite nice to get that foundation in place and then you can develop them to to add different levels of difficulty but no you did those really well today it's good thank you Lindsay so let's um let's stretch out I actually quite like to use a chair for this and you can do them freestanding, but the reason I like to sometimes use your chair is because it keeps the hips nice and square. So if you sit down for me, Tricia, and um, sit sort of halfway, halfway back rather than all the way back, obviously don't, don't come to the point where the chair's gonna topple forward, take care. Um, then you're going to put one leg straight out to the front so that the heel rests on the floor. Yeah, sit up nice and tall, take a breath in, and on the out breath, bring your upper body towards your thigh. That's it, so do take care that the chair is nice and stable. If you want to put it up against a wall, then that's fine. So, Tricia, you should be feeling a stretch down the back of your right leg, can you feel that? Yeah, very intense. Okay, so only go to the point that's right for you. Good. And then you can make your way back up. If you start halfway along the chair, that's it, yep. Yeah. Legs straight out, heel rests on the floor, breathing in, straight back, comes forward. Keep your shoulders away from your ears as you do. That's it. And just come to the point that's right for you. Trish is quite flexible in her hamstrings, but a lot of people won't be. So you'll soon feel when the stretch is right and just hold it there and breathe. Really important to breathe through your stretches. As I said, about 10 to 15 seconds on these kind of stretches to hold. And then you can release them off. Good, perfect, lovely. Um, 
sorry to keep turning the chair around, but just so that people can get the best view, if you face us again, and then put your foot on your knee. I know this is really tight for you, so. I'm very tight in my, in my heel, yeah. but in my hip. That's yeah. it. So you're, you're great in your hamstring and very flexible, but I know this area is tight, which it will be for a lot of people. So take it gently. And all we're looking to do for, for a lot of you, just having your leg there will probably be enough. Um, if you want to gently put your hand, so in this case, it would be Trisha's left hand to the side of her left knee and just gently on the inside of the knee and gently ease it down, but be very, very gentle. Um, and so what I'm trying to get with this is a stretch in the bottom and the side of the hip that we used earlier on. How does that feel, Tricia? Not, not great. Extremely uncomfortable, yeah. yeah. And then swap sides. You can do this lying on your back um, as well, which is a bit easier for some people. So if you start with your on your back with your feet flat on the floor so your knees will be bent and put the foot on the knee in that position and it can be a little bit easier. Good, and then relax, perfect. Okay, and then we're going to stretch the front of the thigh. So if you can stand up, if you want to hold onto the wall, you can do. That's it, so you're going to take a hold of your foot. That's it. Yeah, maybe if you face the wall, Tricia, then um, people can see. So can you see at the moment that Tricia's knee is quite a long way? The one that she's bending is quite a long way in front of the other one. So we want to stand tall and bring that knee back so it's in line with the other leg as much as it can be. If you're really tight down the front of the thigh, then you might find that it's quite hard to do that. So as much as you can, stand tall and think about the knee pointing down to the floor rather than out in front and slightly tuck your bottom under and that should give you a very big stretch in the front of the thigh. And then you can swap sides. For anybody that can't get their foot, which again is quite common, then you can use a band around the front of your foot or you can actually lie on your tummy and use a band or a towel to bring your foot in towards your body. So you're basically in this exact same position, but you'll be lying on your tummy to do it. It can sometimes be a bit easier. So stand nice and tall. So what happens is because we're tight through the front of the thigh, Either the knee wants to come forward or the upper body will want to come forward because it's, it's struggling with that flexibility. So stand as tall as you can and keep the knee pointing down as much as you can. Okay, let's finish off with a calf stretch then because we did our calf raises, so we need to stretch them out. So if you face the wall and put your hands at chest height, now step one foot close to the wall and take the other one a decent distance away. That's it. Now, just like we talked about earlier on with regard to the positioning of the feet, make sure that both feet are straight and facing forward. Um, you'll find that the back heel will want to kick into the center. So from there, you're gonna take a breath in and on the out breath, bend through your front leg, leaving the back heel down on the floor. So you're shifting the weight and you keep coming forward with your body weight until you can feel a stretch in the calf on that leg at the back and just hold it there. If you lift your heel, then you'll find that the stretch will go off the calf. So it's important to, yeah, if you do that, then the stretch will go off. So keep the heel pinned down. That's it. And then you can swap over. So back heel down, take a breath in and on the out breath, ease the body weight forward, bending through the front knee until you get enough stretch in your calf at the back. Keep breathing through all your stretches. That's it. And release it off and let's have a couple of big 
deep breaths. So soften through the knees, breathing in and reaching up over your head. So nice big breaths. So let's, that's it. And then come back round. So you're gonna soften the knees, take a breath in and reach up. That's it. And then breathe out and return one last time. Breathing in and reach up. Good. And breathing out. And give yourself a clap. Well done. Thank you, Lindsay. Pleasure. How did you find that? Yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, hopefully that was helpful to all of you. And, uh, you know, onwards and upwards. Keep going. <laughs> Great work. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye.